Today's video is going to be about trying to find a transfer case for my Cummins Explorer project. Now, I've looked at all of my local U-pools and everywhere I could find, and I wasn't able to find neither a transfer case nor a bell housing, but I was able to find a transfer case on Craigslist. So I'm gonna head over. The guy told me that I could have it for 300 bucks as long as I pull it myself, which is great for me. The good news is that it's a 241 DHD rather than a 241 DLD which is great because it's stronger, but the issue with this is that that also means that it uses a 29 spline input, whereas my transmission has a 23 spline output. So the objective for today's video will be to get this transfer case home and get it apart so that I can order the parts that I need for it while I continue to work on the other parts of this Explorer build. So I finally found a transfer case, but it wasn't at a U-pull. I found a guy found a guy that had one. So now, underneath here, trying to pull a transfer case. So that is what we're doing today. back on the freeway and headed home. I am covered in crap. I got I was pulling clumps of grass out of my hair and stuff. I was wearing coveralls and a hat and glasses and all that, but it's dirty business underneath that old farm truck. So only one more big piece of the puzzle to go before I got everything I need for this swap, and that's the bell housing. Of course, I need the clutch and everything too, but that's all pretty generic. I just need the bell housing and then I got all the major components ready to go other than a front end, so yep, pretty exciting. I'm really glad I was able to find one locally and I was able to save at least 500 bucks over getting one on eBay or something, so I'm glad I was able to find one. See you when we're back in the garage. All right, I'm back in the garage and what I want to do today is start uh, pressure washing and cleaning off some of these parts so I can start working on them. For example, this transfer case absolute muddy mess. I want to drain the oil out of it, bring it outside, pressure wash it. Now I'm still, the input shaft for this guy, it actually, the input shaft sold out. So I'm waiting for that to come back in stock. I've been searching eBay and stuff. I should have just bought it when I had the chance, but I didn't. I'd also like to take this apart and see if there's any other parts it needs on the inside. For example, uh, I was watching a DeBoss Garage video and he was talking about how the, uh, the plastic pads on the shift forks like to wear out so I might have to buy that might have to buy a couple other small things but that's what we're doing on that let's go what do you know there was some aluminum under that mud so it's obviously not perfect but the last little bit that needs cleaned off I'll get that when I'm disassembling it it's going to make it a lot easier to rebuild this having it not completely covered in mud so that's good all right so Next thing is next, it's time to get this transfer case apart so that I can see what is inside of it that I might need to order. So I need to order the input shaft for it, but I need to verify that it actually has the correct size bearing for the one that I'm ordering. And then I also want to make sure there's no other rebuild parts that I need to purchase. So let's get this transfer case apart so that I can figure out what parts I need to order. And then that way I can get them on order while I work on other stuff on the chassis so that I don't get pushed off too far. All right, um, I don't have circlip pliers, so this is what I made work. See this giant clip here? I didn't have circlip pliers to come in the top and open it, so I had to make do with some screwdrivers and, a, and some pliers, and it worked okay, but definitely get some circlip pliers. 
some snap ring pliers. I'll be getting some before I finish this. The closest thing I had were these, which are meant for when there's holes to put it in. Anyways, so that was the trick to getting that off is that clip holds it onto this bearing. And a good pair of circlip pliers would have made that much easier. All right, moving on. So you've probably seen me struggling with this stupid C-clip here, or lock ring, however you want to call it. I tried screwdrivers, I tried picks, I even tried taking a pair of these garbage replaceable tips pliers. And I ground down, cut off the tips and ground down the edges to get the shape I needed, and then they wouldn't open wide enough. So I even ground down, ground a lot of material off there, and I even straightened these, and they still won't open enough, and they're just too wiggly. So after an hour and a half or so of fighting with it, finally got tired of it, and I went to Napa and got a real, a real pair of pliers. So hour and a half with the wrong tool, let's see how long it takes me with the right tool. And this is my first time trying these. There we go. So these were $15. So use the right pair of tools because that was an hour and a half fighting when I could have just run to the store and spent $15 on suppliers. So, And weirdly, Napa was the only place that had these. I went to three other places and I could only find them in Napa, but only 15 bucks. So, Or lock ring pliers, good for removing lock rings. Not worth trying to make something else work when it's $15 for those. So now that I got that, let's see if I can separate this case. So this is what a NP241 HD, the heavy duty one, looks like. As you can see, one of the big advantages of the HD versus the LD, and one reason I'm glad I got it, is it has a bigger, a wider chain. So there's a couple bearings and stuff that are a little wider. I think the sh uh, one or two of the shafts might be a little wider. But the biggest thing is that this chain here has a couple more links in it. And it's like 10 to 20% wider. So. That's what the inside of the DHD looks like and why I'm glad that I ended up with that. This is where we're at. We can see deep in there that brass material is the synchronizer. So we'll see if there's any wear on that synchronizer. You can see here uh, is the shaft that the shift fork moves on. We'll pull those off and look at those pads on the shift fork, see if they're okay. I need to take a measurement on that shaft on the opposite side to see what size bearing goes on it. and. Yep, here we we'll go. This is the part of the transfer case where you actually get your gear reduction. So it actually uses a planetary gear set, which is interesting to me. This is what you see inside automatic transmissions and stuff. 
Now the part of this that I need to replace is right here because this is what goes on the end of the transmission and this is too big and has too many splines for my transmission. So I need to replace this. Oops. Ignore that. I need to replace this piece here. So the problem I'm trying to fix is that this transmission came out of a gas truck, a gas V8 truck. So it has the lighter duty input, which means that this input shaft has the wrong number of splines and it's way too big. So the problem I'm trying to fix is I need to get the smaller version of this for that. Or alternatively, I could get the bigger version of that for the transmission, but that would take a lot more work because that's the main shaft for the transmission. I'd have to pull all the gears and bearings and everything off of it. So that would be my alternative if I can't find this input. Most people actually go the other way around and they try and swap this bigger one that I have, or they have the smaller one and they try and swap to this bigger one that I have. I'm trying to do the opposite, which is a little backwards because it's a weaker shaft, but I'm just trying to run a light Explorer, not a big Ram 2500. So I think it'll still be plenty strong for my application. So the quickest and cheapest and easiest way to do it is just replacing this shaft. So that's what I'm gonna do. I will have to do the same thing on the front of the transmission. I'm gonna have to replace the input shaft to the transmission with a slightly bigger input shaft to go into a Cummins clutch as well. So that's the other part I'll have to replace. All right, so there's the transfer case disassembled. So now that I've gone through it, I know that all of the uh, plastic pieces on the shift forks, that's those pieces there and those pieces there. Those all look totally fine to me. They don't look worn down. I might still replace them just because it's easy to do. Um, the bearings, the bearings all feel fine. I took a look at the synchro and all the teeth on it look solid. They did, it doesn't look like any issues there. This transfer case was in really good shape. So all that I really need to buy for it are this input shaft to make it work on my transmission, but everything else is fine. When you're doing this, you could replace the bearings, you could replace the synchro, and you could replace those plastic bits on the shift fork but I don't have to do it on mine because it's in good shape. I will replace this to make it fit onto my transmi transmission, but that's the only part I actually need. So that's what I'll be buying is that shaft. And then this whole thing will be going back together. And now I actually know exactly which shaft we need. I was worried if I just ordered one, I might get one with the wrong diameter on the bearing or something silly like that. And I didn't want to do that. So now I know exactly which pieces we need. I'll get that shaft on order so that all this can go back together. That was going through the transfer case on my Cummins Explorer project. So now I know what parts I need to order. I'll probably throw it back together off camera and then hopefully I can bolt it to the end of that transmission so that we can get one step closer to having the drivetrain fully together to mock up on the frame. So once I get that input shaft in, I can mount the transfer case to the transmission and then I'm one step closer to having the full drivetrain together so that I can mock it up on this frame and make all the mounts and everything that I need. The biggest thing that I'm still missing is a bell housing, but I'm still working on finding that. But once I find a bell housing, I'll have all the pieces I need to bolt the drivetrain together and mock it up on the frame and start making all the mounts and everything that I need. So we're getting closer. That should be the next video you see is doing, actually getting this one ton axle, this Dana 70 underneath the Explorer properly. The video after that will probably be putting a front end on this thing as well. And then after that, hopefully mounting up, mocking up the drivetrain, fabricating those mounts, boxing the frame. And at that point, we're we just have some fuel system to run and some stuff like that. And then we're ready to put the body back on. So that's where we're at on this project. Thank you for watching. Like it if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna see the rest of this and I'll see you next time.